Keep in mind that an indifference curve is a set. It's a collection of bundles with the specific property that the consumer will be indifferent between any two bundles in this collection. There is absolutely no guarantee that this collection will be an actual mathematical curve without additional assumptions. For example, we can have a fat indifference curve. In this example, I start with the X bundle. Here are five other bundles and the consumer is indifferent between all these five bundles and the starting bundle. If I keep on adding yellow bundles, I may end up with this indifference curve, where even though you cannot see it, I am making air quotes around curve. But really, without additional assumptions, the indifference curve can take any shape. It can even be a single point. Later, we will add additional assumptions on preferences, which will guarantee that the indifference curve will be the graph of some function. So here's an indifference curve. I have painted it black in this slide. This indifference curve contains an infinite number of bundles and the consumer is indifferent between any two of them. Here is a new bundle which is not on the indifference curve. This bundle may, for example, be strictly preferred to all bundles on my indifference curve. Typically, there will be other bundles which the consumer will value as much as this new bundle. That is, we typically have an indifference curve which passes through this new bundle. Similarly, we may have an indifference curve below and to the left of our starting one. We typically have an infinite number of indifference curves in the first quadrant. In drawing several indifference curves, as long as preferences are total, two different indifference curves will never intersect. To show that two indifference curves cannot intersect when the weak preference relation is total, I will draw two different indifference curves that do intersect and show that the weak preference relation cannot be total in that case. So here is my first indifference curve, something like this. Pick any two bundles on this curve and the consumer will be indifferent between these two bundles. Now I'm going to draw a second different indifference curve intersecting the first one, maybe something like this. Let's label this one and two. A consumer can never be indifferent between a bundle on the first indifference curve and a bundle on the second one. If she were, they would be the same indifference curve and not two different ones. Well, if you look at the bundle where these two indifference curves intersect, it must be the case that for this bundle, it's located on both the first indifference curve and the second indifference curve. Therefore, one and two cannot be two different indifference curves if they intersect. As a final, somewhat technical point, we would not violate total order of the weak preference relation if this was a single indifference curve, meaning that the consumer is indifferent between any two bundles on any two of these curves. However, such an indifference curve would be very weird and we will exclude it later on when we introduce the monotonicity assumption on preferences. Next, we have a concept closely related to indifference curves called the weakly preferred set. We start with the bundle x1, x2. The weakly preferred set for this bundle is a collection of bundles. Any bundle y1, y2, which is weakly preferred to x1, x2, is in the weakly preferred set for the X bundle. Here is a picture. Here's our starting bundle. We have a bunch of bundles which are on the indifference curve for X1, X2, bundles painted yellow. We also have a bunch of bundles which are strictly preferred to the X bundle painted green. All these bundles are weakly preferred to X1, X2, and they constitute the weakly preferred set to our bundle x1, x2. Note that the indifference curve for the x bundle is always included in the weakly preferred set for the bundle. 